Ray and Nevue at Jamaica Premier League here at the National Stadium East Field. Look at that view. Lovely conditions here. They're united against Malines United. Eight versus 12 in the top flight of Jamaica's football. And we have the two coaches who did some work with Ligier Williams earlier. And yeah, as we get ready for this match, it will be interesting to hear what the coaches will eventually have to say as well. Linville Dixon and Jermaine Miller as we get ready for walkout. One day, one goal, peace. Chris Taylor alongside Ligier Williams. And Ligier was quite a, a dull encounter when we look back to that first match in week one, match week one. It was at nil all draw. Uh, Malines, obviously, and that, that their form has kind of continued from that. The only one win so far this season. And have struggled to, as you said, find the fluency they had last season up front. But here United had the bit of the chances, but as they were guilty of last season, wasteful and not necessarily converting well, they have improved as things have gone on this season. How do you think today will match up and who will go in as front runners? Yeah, I think that, I think those, that encounter really tricked us a bit um, because we saw a Malines team that stood up to pressure well as opposed to last season. We may have thought that they have would have battened down the hatch a bit defensively. That hasn't happened this season. And we saw a very united team that w we may have thought would have carried on from last season in terms of that nil all result and being defensively sound. That hasn't happened either. They've conceded more, but they've been a much more potent attacking threat. So it, it, it's been a complete deviation than from what we're used to from these both teams. So I'm hoping to see much more of that today. Molines United under new management They'll be looking to surge up the table a bit, you know, clear themselves from the relegation dogfight that they have found themselves in because it's really only the three teams down there that have been outliers this season. Very United looking to push into that top six for the first time in a couple of seasons. And I think that they're well placed to do it. They have the quality to do it. And with new additions today, I think that they have to be seen as favourites. Yeah, I'd like to agree, even though Vier United coming off of a loss against Dumbo Holding, where they actually led in that game only to go down by two goals to one against 2022's beaten finalists in Dumbo Holding. But two wins in their last five matches, Vier United, a 2-0 win over Treasure Beach and a 2-0 win over Champions Mount Pleasant. That was an impressive win for Vier United. And they had a draw in there as well against Harbour View, which, yeah... You'd have to say they probably might have looked at that as, 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 as missing out on two points because Harborview at that point were struggling in the season. They're trying to, they're finding their footing now. But yeah, Malines just haven't been able to get it going. One win in just 13. Dismal when you think that last season, Malines had their best season. Yes, they finished in ninth, but they amassed some 30 points and, you know, really put quite a few wins together. 37 goals as well as we've said repeatedly, fourth in terms of goal scoring with Jason Wright with 14 and Nicholas Nelson with 7. They have lost Nicholas Nelson and that has really hit them off of their perch in terms of goal scoring. And defence continues to be a major issue at Mullines. Ever since actually they have made it into the Premier League back in 2019. Defence has been a big issue and you can see here already conceding 22 goals, the third worst in the, in, in the Premiership. Yeah, you know, I think the writing was on the wall from last season because, Chris, as you would know, as I'm sure anyone who follows football would know, it's defence that really keeps teams solid when it comes on to, you know, pushing up the table and improving year on year. And for Malines, if you're not going to sort out the defence, eventually that attack will fail and you will need something to fall back on. And they have nothing to fall back on now because the goals have dried up, as you mentioned. And then when you put that together with the, the defence, it hasn't been looking too good for my lines, so you know, but yeah. Well, Lige, interesting perspectives, and you were on interview duty as well. Let's hear what they had to say. Linville Dixon from Veer United and assistant coach of my lines, Jermaine Miller. Coach Dixon, last time out, your team relinquished a lead against Dumbo Holding. What did you learn from that result? 
Uh, well, uh, I think uh, we, we lose our focus. Our concentration was, you know, a little bit down there because we lead in going into the second half, uh, into the second half, you know, and then uh, we make two drastic mistake errors, you know, that cost us the game to loss. You know, but uh, again, a part of the game, they, they capitalize on it, you know, so we just have to fix that, you know, and we, we do fix it, you know, uh, in training. So we, we, we sure we'll give a better, a better performance overall in terms of... Coach Miller, you know, after a few positive results, it was a difficult loss last time out against Cavalier. What kind of lessons did you learn from that result? Um, we, we, we took a lot from it in terms of um, how we defended as a, as, a, as a team and a whole and how we, we, we transitioned from defence to attack. Um, I think the, the, the speed of play was, was a bit too slow and, and we have worked on that in the, the, in the last few, few sessions. You mentioned the sessions, of course, but it's been 11 days since your last game. Do you think that, that that has helped your team to really gel more and maybe we'll see an even more cohesive unit today? Yeah, most definitely. Um, coming in as a, a new coaching staff, we, we, we needed a little bit of time with the, with, with the team. And yes, we have, we have gotten some time and, and I think we have done some good enough work. And when this Malines team faced Very United opening game of the season, it was a nil all draw, tight encounter. Is that something that you're expecting to be replicated here today? Um, we we'll want to better that one. Um, the objective is to collect as many points as possible. So the objective is to get three points here today. And it's a new coaching staff, a lot of new ideas. How are the players taking to those ideas? Do you think that it's being translated well? Yes, very much so. Um, it's, it's, it's been a nice um, last week. I think um, we have brought in some, some new ideas and they are adapting very well. Interesting perspectives there. Jeremy Miller talking about his defensive woes. Arguably the worst defensive display of the season. That match against Cavalier 3 0. And that could easily have been even double figures if Cavalier really take their chances. Cavalier was very, were very wasteful up front and still managed three goals as we see the teams walk out. You'd like to think about an improving very United that Malines have to be better defensively. They were very guilty of allowing so much space, especially in the wide areas. And even though very United probably haven't been as as, as potent, as say, or clinical as a, as a Cavalier, as I said, in an improving unit who have scored 17 goals already this season, they will make Malines pay. So, yeah, they have had a lot of time off, Lige. They have done work. And it will be interesting to see how things shape up today in their 4-4-2, especially with regular player Jeremy Nelson out due to cards, or due to his red card in the last match. Fair, however, Linval Dixon a bit disappointed as the teams go through the pleasantries that they gave up that lead. Three second half goals it was, Fair United scoring first and then as you heard Linville Dixon say he's a real taskmaster when it comes to defence. And uh, a big Jamaican defender in his time with the Reggae Boys and otherwise played in for Charleston Bas Battery as well as Hazard United in his time did Linville Dixon. Referee Carvel Banton, the 46-year-old, is the man in charge. Uh, he's been a referee since 2005. Oje Dehaney, Nicholas Anderson and Andre Farkasen, his assistants. Carvel Banton, who did his first Premier League game back in 2009-2010, so a long time now. I won't ask where you were at that time, but yeah, he's been in and out of from the Premier League panel and here for this fixture here today. It does work otherwise with the Ministry of Education, as Carvel Banton, senior referee, and this quartet will be in charge of, charge of this important fixture as Malines. Just one place above the relegation zone, one point above the relegation zone as well, ahead of Treasure Beach. And this is how their opponents will shape up Fair United. Off Neil Reed, new between the sticks. No Roger Williams, that's a big miss. Brown, Beckford, Clark, Damian Thomas, newly into the starting lineup. Kemoy slowly. Nathaniel Howe, the schoolboy. Kareem McLean, Dunstan Cohen, the Denby United, Denby United, Denby High School star. Uh, Tevon Salmon as well as Daniel Daly is how they'll shape up. Of course, they're coached by Linval Dixon and they'll be playing with a 4-3-3. No Lamar Neal in the squad yet again. And you always worry when you don't see him in the squad. Him and Brown usually team up very well. 
Javier Brown. Malines United, this is their starting 11 force change, of course, as we said, with Jeremy Nelson being out. And Taraj Andrews comes into the starting lineup. Enrique Gordon, the exciting wing back, is there as well. Sergini Frankson and, of course, regular Peter Harrison between the sticks. Rashawn Livingston will partner Jason Wright up front. And Steve Reed comes into the midfield with Daniel Hardy and Javon Brown, who will play in front of the back four. The versatile midfielder, Brown, who has played left back this season, played, has played left midfield and now playing through the spines. And his creativity, I think, important in terms of Malign's progression through the season, Leger. And he's going to have a tough job as well to hold back this Veer United attack, which has been significantly better, I think, following their exploits last season. Didn't score much at all, but had one of the better defender had had a, had a pretty good defense we have a slight delay to the game here peter harrison wearing a kit that's a bit similar or should i say quite similar to the very united kit yeah i'm just wondering why this wasn't picked up earlier i mean he didn't just appear on the field did peter harrison and there's already been a delay to the start of the game and now a further delay and yeah, it's very obvious there that it is it's really close. I mean, it's missing the yellow, but as you say, at first glance, especially with those lime green skins, it can cause problems for the officials. Peter Harrison, who did, was out for the first couple games of the of the season with Harrison, had an injury and has come back in. He's looks solid between the sticks, has had a couple of really good showings. In fact, even against Cavalier, he made some big, important saves. Uh, couldn't really stop the 3-0 loss but yeah his defense line well, they're still trying to find the right combination at the back is Jermaine Thomas and company and even though their last three results you would have to say promising because there's been a win and a draw to go with that 3-0 loss against Cavalier their first win against and only win against Moby United and then that one all draw as well which was against Waterhouse so two tough matches and getting it the results Harrison well, still hasn't changed the shirt, even though it's there waiting on him. So, yeah, from that perspective, positive. However, as you said, the last matchup just against Cavalier was really disappointing in terms of their display. And as I said, a long time off, hopefully, has, has worked in their favor. And Veer United, who, when they look at the table, they have 18 points, Veer United, and Dumble Holding who are in sixth position, of course, the top six through to the playoffs. And Dumble Holding are, have 21 points, just three ahead of them. And an inferior goal difference at this point to Veer United. So, uh, we're... Well, well, I'm not sure if that's a changed kit there for Peter Harrison, but he's been given a medical bib. I'm not even sure if that's legal. And uh, Wow, and a CONCACAF bib at that. Well can't say that's the most professional looking outfit from Peter Harrison but the officials are happy that they can start the game with it and we're finally about to get started Carvel Banton the man with the whistle and Veer United will have kickoff Kemar Beckford, the man over the ball, wearing the number 33. Five goals on the season in nine matches. And played a lot of his football in Central America. Did Beckford, played with Cost in Costa Rica at first before crossing the borders into El Salvador. And 60 goals in his previous. There's another delay again, Lige. We just can't seem to get this game started. And we hope with all this weight, it's much more exciting than the last time they met when <laughs> it was a nil all scoreline. I know, I think it's actually pretty comical because as someone who goes around and watches a lot of football across the island, these things really only happen when it's a televised game. So quite unfortunate that we have the delay here, but clearly the referees aren't happy with the uniform or the match match commissioner either with a uniform that Peter Harrison is and, and from quite, his yeah. point of view he doesn't look too pleased either no and, and rightly so I don't think there's any way at, at this is the highest level of football in Jamaica that 
I mean, a player should be out there with a medical kick. And, and it's not a CONCACAF match either, and he has on a CONCACAF bib. I mean, yeah, I, I, I would like to agree with that, that, that that definitely should be changed. And stunning to think that there are no other shirts around of a contrasting nature that he could put on. The players on the bench are wearing those same white bibs, but what they have done is turn it around so you're not seeing the medical or the conquer cuff. But yeah, they really need to get their act together here. And as I said, maybe Malay's coming here would not have been aware that this would have caused an issue, but the game is already late. These, the four officials were here early. They should have picked this up. Of course, not... not Something that's new to my lines. We do remember a previous occasion where half of you who wear similar colors with the blue and yellow had issues as well. As assistant coach Andre Daly you now finds a, a yellow shirt. And yeah, I think that one definitely will be able to work. There shouldn't be any mix ups. He's going to be quite the colorful man in goal, Peter Harrison. And that looks like the change kit, the, the, the alternative kit for Malines, which is a, is, is a yellow top. And finally, we seem as if we're going to have get a start to this game. Well, it should have already been 10 minutes in. Carvel Banton seems settled. Fair United against Malines. Sometimes since Fair United have tasted victory, in this fixture, Malines did the double over them last season. 4 0 and 1 0 results. In fact, Fear have failed to score since April of 2022. So, in a one all draw, it was at that time, two seasons ago, the last time Fear United have scored against Malines. So, yeah a lot to rectify for them. Here, of course, in the green with full green with yellow trim. Ready to come forward, good tackle coming in from Enrique Gordon. Gordon, one of the most impressive players out of the Falkland unit last season. Of course, they got relegated. Linval Dixon purely survived relegation himself last season just finished what a position above relegation was a struggle resources were really low and many feel that he did a <laughs> herculean job did Linval Dixon in terms of keeping fair up and this season they have been performing better so far they concede the first corner of the game yeah, Linval Dixon spoke pretty early on about last season about getting out some of the bad seeds out of his team and I think he's done that really well this season. Corner for Malines into the air looking for Hardy. Hardy back on his feet and there's a challenge coming in from Daly and it will be a Veer United throw. Veer have had five wins from their 13 matches. Three draws, five defeats. definitely competed well in almost all of their fixtures this season and scoring goals as they drive forward here now here is McLean and that will trickle out and it will be a corner to fear Jermaine Thomas taking over the reins here at Malines taking over from Alex Thomas no relation Jermaine of course leading McGrath to the Ben Francis Cup their first trophy at the senior level in high school football and did have the reins at Dumble Holding last season now with Malines they defend their first corner and headed away comes to right who does well does play excellently with his back to goal right very intelligent player of course a man who represented the island at the under 17 and under 20 levels did Jason Wright Driving forward, no chance, shot. But yeah, that would be easy for Reed. New between the sticks, Neil Reed, taking over from Roger Williams, who 
I'm sure if it's a bit of a niggle or a bit of indiscipline, Williams left out, not in the squad at all, is he? No. So, that's a big deal. He has actually had a, a, a pretty good season as well, Roger Williams. As Malines drive forward right, and well, just couldn't beat the offside trap, could he, Jason Wright? I think Malines might go as far as Jason Wright can take them this season. Obvious quality within his boots. Scored the first goal of the season for them, did Jason Wright? It didn't come until the third week. But yeah, I agree with you, Ligier. 14 goals last season, and really one of the best centre forwards in the league. And in fact, Malines, I think, pretty lucky to keep him at the club. Many clubs were interested, as we see Johnny Flemings just making a bad step there, Flemings, and is one of those players that is very injury prone. Started his career at Portmore United, very talented player, very versatile player, but just can't stay fit. You could almost call him a glass Joe. And here's another example. Yeah, extremely early into the game as well. Was a bad landing, and immediately went down. Once he is fit. He's in the starting lineup here at Malines and a lot of the times at Portmore as well because of his versatility, Johnny Flemings. But fitness is a, is a real issue for him. He was he didn't start the season because he was injured as well. Has come in and uh, and is doing well. There's Roger Williams who is not in the match squad today, and he'll be disappointed at that very energetic energetic character. Roger Williams, tall, lanky figure, and yeah. Giving an opportunity basically to us, Neil Reed. Don't say that Fear United has had the best season defensively either because they've conceded 17 goals. We've seen some other seasons where they've been a lot more stubborn, Fear United. Patty in the middle of the park, looking for right, can't find him. Clearance there by Taraj Andrews. Acquired mid season last season from Real Mona Andrews. And here he is on the ball. Uh, good turn there. And finds right to doesn't provide the best pass. And Brown leaves it. Now a chance for Veer to drive forward. Into the area. And Daly just couldn't settle that. And yeah, the offside flag is up. Not sure if it was Pickford in the end who ended up offside or Daly. Yeah, first good glimpse of what we can expect from Vera United, especially when there's a quick transition. I think the best pass here was to coin on the left side, but couldn't get across to him. And an early sign of Malines fragility as well. Yeah, Malines generally throughout the season opened up so easily and tend to have this, this way of backing off. In fact, you saw Javon Brown there who's sitting in front and they're playing one man short still because Flemings has not returned on the sideline uh, not sure if it's a bit of a, an ankle injury there looked like he might have rolled the ankle uh, Sergini Frankson with the first clearance tend to be very, re very reactive this Malines defense and yeah Cavalier <laughs> I mean at the end of it Rudolph Speed did talk about how wasteful they were and they still ended up with three goals but Albeit it was 1 0 for quite some time. The second and third goals came in the space of two minutes. But yeah. Assistant coach Jeremy Miller did say that the time away in between matches has helped them. They have been able to get back to the training ground and look at certain things defensively. As Flemings is back on, that's a good sign for Malines into his left back role. Gordon looking for Livingston Livingston not a natural center forward by any stretch of the imagination more of a wing player but maybe the partnership with Wright is what they're hoping for I actually think in the games I've seen with Malines that Hardy has looked 
like the best partner for right, but today Hardy has been asked to play behind the strikers. Yeah, I think with Jason Wright, when you have a strike partner alongside him, I think it's important for them to have pace. Jason Wright, as you mentioned earlier, so good with his back to goal, so important for him to have someone to play off. Here he is again. Well done by Reed to scoop that one up. Yeah, awareness there from the goalkeeper Reed. And they give it away. Here's Brown now to right. Right, using his body well into the area. Jason Wright. He's a setup for Wilson, and that strike is wide. Seems as if it got a deflection. Corner kick coming up now for Malines United. Someone having the very United lineup on their phone showing the 4 3 3. Yeah, into the area. Just go up, and that was missed at the near post. Not the best defending from Veer. And lucky for them, luckily for them, Reed didn't make good contact. Andrews cleans up and plays it back to goalkeeper Harrison. Who you would say indirectly was charged for the late start to this match, Peter Harrison. A kit clash. Salmon cut down, it will be a free kick to Veer. Taken early by Brown, looking for Beckford. And Beckford said, well, Carvel Banton blowing for handball. It did look like it came off the shoulder of Beckford, though, which is what he was suggesting. And Carvel Banton said no, he thought he was below the sleeve. Really high line employed by Veer. So I suspect we'll see a lot of these balls or attempted balls over the top from Mullines. What's the same kind of ploy from Cavalier as well? I'm not sure if the research has shown that Mullines struggle with the high lines in terms of, and there were a lot of offside calls in that game as well. So in terms of breaking the offside trap, maybe Mullines not adept at doing that so far. And we've already seen one offside, Jason Wright. Here is Brown. That will be a foul. Yvonne Brown playing in a, a much more central position today. Nice pass. Oh, lovely first touch from Fleming. And it's a throw to Malines. Not the strongest breeze we've seen at the stadium East Field and even though it does help to cool down conditions, the players probably, in terms of quality of play, wouldn't mind that. Because it does certainly influence play a lot, especially when kicking from right to left, in terms of gauging the passes. As Veer looked to come out, does well. Nice chest pass it was from Beckford. And now to Cohen, the youngster. Looking for Beckford, the pass a bit short. Wilson. And the Lions looking to settle the ball a bit and then that over the top. Very quick is Livingston and he gets to it before Reed, who was a bit tentative, the goalkeeper. And nearly allowed Wils uh, Livingston a chance to score. Who is looking for his first goal of the season, Rashawn Livingston. Yeah, didn't seem sure whether or not to come out a bit stronger there and ended up allowing Livingston to get there before him, not the right type of sweeping. And if you're going to keep such a high line, as very United are, they need their keeper to be much more alert, much more aware. Much more of a sweeper-keeper. Yeah, it wasn't on that occasion. Yeah, looking for a through pass as well. Uh, scrambling to get it away. Donovan Clark on that occasion. Now Brown. Very left-sided, Brown puzzles his way through. Nice pass from right. Plays a one-two with Reed. Well, whistle on the play from Carville Banton. Uh, illegal use of the arm 
from Steve O'Reed. So it's a pass here from Jason Wright. Or was it just a clip from Wright in the end that created a foul? <laughs> he didn't even look up, did he, Jason Wright? Yeah. Tried to sneak it in there. With a decent tempo to the game thus far. I think the high line of air is helping out, helping to condense the pitch a bit. I think often a, a criticism I have of the Jamaica Premier League, as we see the chance here for Livingston, uh, here yeah, Reed, a bit too tentative. You have to make a decision early as a goalkeeper. Well, I think Reed obviously realized he couldn't come out of the area and use his hands, but that's fine, as you as you were suggesting, Leger. You didn't expect him to use his hands. You expect him to come out, chest that ball probably, and clear it one time. Hesitated. And he was very lucky to get away with that. Livingston should have made him pay as Malines looked to come forward again. The bad start to the game in terms of tempo. And very positive so far in Malines' is play. Livingston into the area, not defended well at first, but then cleared eventually. And it will be a Malines throw again. Second corner now we've seen Veer United, I think, not really handle the ball coming in well. Yeah, and it's slowly at that left on that in that left back position, not getting the clearance right. Then that's a nice pass from Beckford. Into transition now. Transitioning well. Cohen. And looking to pass that over the top. But Harrison comes out strong. He was certainly decisive, wasn't he, Peter Harrison? But then gives it away with the clearance. Here go Veer. And Nathaniel Howe battling. It will be there through. I think it was a bit of indecision there from Cohen. Had the ball on a two and one there with the centre back. I think he either should have driven a bit further forward or just play the pass early. Here's a more experienced Beckford with it. Nice one two pass with Brown who likes to drive forward as well. Brown has a strike from distance. And it's blocked by Andrews. And Veer decide to regroup with Clark. Clark now with the hopeful pass, and that would be easy for Harrison. Just lacking a bit of patience there was Clark. Here come my lines. Transition play pretty smooth so far from both these teams. Transitioning quickly. As we enter the 17th minute of play, we're still looking for a goal this season between these two teams. We've now played, what, 117 minutes? And a bit more. Or 107 minutes, actually. Are a bit more and, and still looking for a goal this season. Foul again. Can we see the use of the arm? And something that the officials right across the globe are trying to cut out the illegal use of the arm, especially above sh above shoulder height. So you see a lot of whistles early as my lines get that into the area this time it's pretty good defending from Veer United not enough blue shirts inside the box to really make it count and then we see this quick transition play Daly on the left hand side well cuts it back and he's bounced off to play Carvel Banton didn't see anything wrong I can tell you Carvel Banton an official who generally believes in aggressive style football doesn't like to blow his whistle for anything soft as he says likes the game to flow so no surprise that he let that one go here now is brown from a lines heavily weighted pass to reed who tries to change the play comes to hardy scored a brace in Malines. only win of the season did daniel hardy his only two goals so far this season. 
and Brown does well to retain possession yet again. Well, that's too heavy from Brown. Right ask to pull wide. And that will be another corner from former lines, this time from the other side of the field. Yeah, they've looked pretty good, I, I, I must say, to start the game, Malines United. Much calmer in and around the box. It has caused Vier United some trouble, as well as their corners. It's going to be Livingston this time, this time an in-swinger. Yeah, reg re regular penalty kicker, Livingston. It wasn't a good one towards the near post and cleared. It will be a malign throw. That one just way too shallow in terms of its delivery from a Sean Livingston. Hardy changing the play, a bit ambitious with that pass. Jason Wright comes to collect. Very good when it comes to the link-up play, Jason Wright. They were looking for Wilson there, but can't find him. Now Flemings. Long pass to Wright. It was a good pass, and that touch wasn't a good one from Jason Wright. It's not often you say that. I think he should have kept it for himself there, Jason Wright. And now the long pass looking for Cohen. Two, two teenagers in the front three for Vare United. Dunstan Cohen and Nathaniel Howe. Though maybe Howe more in the middle of the park, but quite a bit of rotation from Vare as well. Dustin Cohen will be more than likely, I assume, jetting off with the under-20 team. Was in the training squad, the local training squad for the national under-20 team. Did represent the under-17 team last year at the CONCACAF Championship and has been a fixture really throughout the age groups. Doesn't attend the the best the Costa Cup school in schoolboy football, one might say, but always impresses when he's around. Actually failed to get out of the group, did Den Behai this season. Did have a game though this season where Dunstan Cohen scored nine goals. Amazing. I think he ended the season with somewhere around was it 15 or thereabouts, Cohen. All coming, of course, in the first round because Tenby didn't make it out. But for Nathaniel Howe, was extremely impressive last season in the Dacosta Cup. His central high team, with him in the midfield, made it all the way to the final. Didn't make it out of their first round group this time around, but the talent is very evident with him. It's very good to see how he has improved, I think, physically as well. Nice one-two play from Fear as they look to get forward. This time the defending is good. Flemings with a pass up front. Again, looking for that hero pass, as we would see initially. Instead of utilizing the midfield, now they settle it with right. Malines dominating position so far. What a first touch that was from Hardy. Plays a one-two with Wilson. Wilson. And almost shows too much of it. Gets a lucky break. Wilson inside to Hardy. And the strike is over the top. Had a little opening there, Daniel Hardy. Still looking for his third goal of the season. Hasn't scored since that win against Mobe United. But this was a promising move from the lines. And not for the first time we've seen in this game. I think very United allowing too much space in and around that zone right in front of the penalty area in that central area and this time they allowed Malines to get the shot off and that's a recipe for disaster I think Malines United still showing that they've been the more impressive team to start this game Here United some good passages of play but Get to string together anything seriously threatening in an attacking sense. Kamar Beck for trying to change that here. Malines with it back. Yeah, here come Veer again. 
Now with Howe. The teenager inside, real chance, could save Harrison. Well, that was too easy, and that is an example of how open this Malines defense can get. Way too easy, to players backing off, and how the very expressive teenager could burst of speed, using the strength. That was weak from Frankson, though. Scott to utilize his body, better the center back. And how maybe a bit surprised or a bit disappointed that he didn't convert there. Yeah, it was really good work from the youngster. You mentioned how poor the Molines defense was in that on that occasion, and it was, but I think it was really good work from how I mentioned how he has improved physically over the past couple of seasons and showed examples of it there. Brushed off contact and chose the right finish, but Peter Harrison stood tall. Yeah, yeah. I thought that initially he would have, based on the angle, he would have been looking for the far corner did how it went a little bit too central maybe he went actually was looking to go through the legs of harrison who did very well and now at the opposite end fair united concede a corner but yeah good save from harrison who pretty well experienced now peter harrison as i said made quite a few saves against cavalier in that three nil defeat and that was a big big moment there for him some disappointing corners from Rashawn Livingston. So now it will be Enrique Gordon who will try his luck. Fifth corner for Malines. Seven corners in the first 25 minutes. Wow. Here it is towards the near post as well. Still can't find a blue shirt. And again, not the best delivery. And again, Brown breaks up play well for Malines. This is a better delivery inside the area. And Sam on the way. And Veer just can't keep possession. Some lousy passes in the middle of the park. And now finds Wilson. That should have been a foul. And well, that was missed. But that was certainly a foul on Wilson. And Veer, who... One thing about Veer, they're very speedy going forward, especially in the wing area. So their transition play is very good. But in the middle of the park, they, they give away the ball too, too often, too easily. And I think Daniel Daly has been one of the main protagonists in terms of doing that so far. Here Playing a bit too slowly for my liking. Now again, that's an overambitious pass there. And only finds a, a, a blue shirt. That was the teenager how on that occasion. Now here goes Flemings. That's a much better pass. This time it's with my lines. And right for the return ball to Flemings. Now to Hardy. Oh, what a turn that is from Jason Wright, and that's going to be a yellow card. Damian Thomas, who once used to wear this blue kit a season ago, one of the new additions in this transfer window, which is open for the month of January. And he picks up the first booking of the game. What a turn that was from Jason Wright. That's a drop of the shoulder, and he was off. Yeah, not the quickest of players, but so deceptive in his movement, Jason Wright. Never a player that he can give an inch of space, and I think Thomas knows that. Tried his best to get in quickly, but good deceptive work by Jason Wright, and he's over this free kick as well with Johnny Flemings. He's left it now. Well, if Thomas didn't know before, he will know now. Did play with him last season, though, Damian Thomas. So, well, those training sessions had a lot of work to do. Here's the delivery. It's inside to right. A cheeky pass inside right was looking for. Wilson, I think he was at the back post, and well, that will find the furthest of posts from Rashawn Livingston. Finds the flag poles behind the goal area. And it will be a goal kick for Vare United. Now into the 28th minute, and the wait continues for a goal in this fixture. Cohen and Daly just can't get it right. And again, you spoke about Daly giving away the ball. There's another example. Not a very difficult pass from Daly, but just can't find the execution, and they turned it over. Andrews going for that Hail Mary pass again to right. 
and the midfield is so open and it travels pretty easily to him Hardy doing battle now Andrews plays it back to Harrison and Harrison with a lousy clearance finds how inside to Daly da oh, Daly just thought he had an avenue there to the left daily but decided to cut it back now with Brown wide and the pass can't find a green shirt that was Kareem McLean I think that was actually good defending by Malines and Jason Wright trying to put that one over yeah I think he forgot about the breeze the Jason Wright from he kicked that there was no way Livingston was going to get onto that no matter how speed he is. Yeah, yeah, the pass was a little bit too direct. Straight. Broken up again in the middle of the park. Here is Reed. White to Livingston. Livingston tries to force the pass and it's not on. And now it comes to Brown who himself tries a very ambitious pass out to Cohen. And the wind will take care of that. Yeah, I think it's a balancing act with the wind. It has because, picked up, hasn't it? Yeah, because sometimes when you're playing those balls over the top, it's not that it's the wrong decision to pass, but sometimes the ball needs to be driven a bit more through the breeze. I think those types of curling passes will always pick up in the breeze and go astray. They can cause some problems for defenses because of the uncertainty, but not in that case. Very United build again now. You mentioned the midfield being a bit open. Yeah, Howe well, that's a well. lovely control there from Howe, the youngster. Coming of age, you would say. Out to McLean, who is battling now with someone who just can't get past. Was it Fleming at the back in that left back position? What a useful play is Johnny Fleming. What skill from Howe. How, how ambitious from the youngster. Nice pass inside. Is he offside though, Beckford? I think he is. Well, we said coming of age. <laughs> come at the hour, come at the man. Look at that skill from Nathaniel Howe through the legs. And if you didn't see it there, download the Sportsmax app today and you can catch it there from the Google Play or the Apple App Store. Download the Sportsmax app. So much sporting content on the home of champions. West Indies, Australia, of course, coming up on Tuesday. Cricket, lovely cricket. And so much football, you can find the Trinidad Premier League there as well. La Champions League. And, of course, the African Cup of Nations coming up. And it's ongoing as well, of course. My dear Mo Salah is there competing, unfortunately, for Liverpool. But such it is. Exciting tournament. I don't know why you're smiling so much, Lizzie, as that goes into orbit, that corner, and <laughs> it went behind, so it will be a goal kick. I know a lot of other teams that bear a red colour might be happy that Mo Salah has gone on his journeys. I mean, it's really, I assume that maybe you're talking about Manchester United because for Arsenal, it's really here or there for us. <laughs> Mm. I won't remind you of our current position as Malines look to create a position of their own as they drive forward into well, they'll earn another corner this I make it number six half a dozen corners for Malines and we're still waiting for a good delivery yeah I think even the deliveries that have been dangerous have come through a bit of poor defending from Vir United they, and they have actually come from second balls or third deliveries some of the time. Livingston has gone back to take it. The Gordon trick didn't work. This time it's improved. Even for the back post, but not enough Malines players attacking the ball either. As it comes to Wilson. Wilson looking for right, and well, he would have to grow a few inches, Jason Wright. And at his lovely age now of 31, that's not going to happen. Oday and Samuels in the house. Double holding, of course, come up next against Arnett Gardens. He has played for both those clubs. Oday and Samuels. And 
currently with Dumble Holding. Has come off the bench in the last few games. In fact, the last game that Dumble Holding played, he came off and was put in a centre forward position, Odin Samuels. And this is a man who has never scored a Premier League goal. He's only scored in the Link Cup, which in that impressive W. You remember that wonder game he had at last last season, last Link Cup, Odin Samuels scored two, well, miraculous goals. And yeah, I think he, he surprised himself as well along the way. I spoke to him before the season and he said that he was aiming to get five goals so maybe he's not too surprised that he was put in that striker position he was used as a super sub but the super didn't really come off here is wilson and out for a throw that livingston will take here's a player of sean livingston who's so so talented so dangerous that was a nice ball into the area and hardy well looked as if he was playing dandy shandy with the ball in the end but earned his team a corner yeah, Livingston, do you really think, especially in a struggling season for Malines, that players like Rashawn Livingston with his ability and talent need to add a lot more in terms of production, needs to get amongst the goals. Did score three last season, and he's better than that Rashawn Livingston. This season he can't find one, as that is a good delivery towards the back post. And Jason Wright was outnumbered, and Malines will have yet another corner. Is this what now? Eight corners for Malines? Wow. They are improving in terms of the quality of delivery, though. Can they find the finished product? Five goals they scored against Veer last season, did Malines, across two games. Can they find one here? Nice delivery to the front post and flicked on. And it will be out for a throw. Well, it was off a Veer defender. So it will be a Malines throw yet again, says Carvel Banton. Nice for a touch from Enrique Gon, who is on the left-hand side. Gon into the area, looking for right. Can't quite find him, but he's given away. Livingston. Livingston from distance. And it's blocked. And that will be goalkeeper to goalkeeper. Have had quite a bit of the ball in and around the 18-yard area of Vier United have my lines. But so far, that final bit of quality has been missing as it has so often this season as Veer transition well yet again we're now with Cohen Cohen has already scored once this season and can't find the delivery into the area playing at the Jamaica youth levels Cohen now with the under 20 team played in the under 17 unit as well was at one stage the youngest player to play Premier League football was about 14 years of age I think when he made his debut or just 15, I actually, th I actually think it was before he turned 15, but yeah, Dunstan Cohen. That season, it was, a lot of the football was being played at the Burrell Centre of Excellence. Captain Horace Burrell Centre of Excellence. And it was in the heights of the COVID time, and yet Cohen made his debut on the AstroTurf. Yeah, the talent was evident and still is evident. Still a bit raw though. I think his end product and maybe some of his actions can be a bit more decisive, but I assume that will come with age. Still very good to be playing Premier League football as he handles that one. Yeah, that, that, that part is a little bit, as I said, disappointing based on the age that he would have played Premier League initially. You might have expected him to progress further. And you do wonder if, even at the high school level where he would play a lot of football, if he was playing maybe with a school uh, that has a better system, if it would have advanced his football quicker. Um, but yeah. Yeah, with the amount of quality teams in that Clarendon rural St. Catherine area, I'm actually surprised that he has stayed at Denby. I mean, let's not knock him for, for loyalty, as you'd say. He's decided to stick with his school, and he's arguably the best player in the school as well. Still failed to make it out of the first group, though, in, the, in a, a really, as you said, tough zone, a zone with a lot of quality. Glenmuir Central played against Howe twice. Here he is trying to get on it, Howe. Slips. 
probably fouls Harrison in the end. But yeah, so much, I mean, that was just in his zone. But of course, as you said, throughout Clarendon, you're talking about Clarendon College, the champions. Glenn Muir were champions as well of the Champions Cup. Gavi Maceo was a semi-finalist. So, I mean, there's so much quality in, in Clarendon. In fact, some of the teams that haven't, that didn't make it through from the parish of Clarendon, in other parishes, they would have flown through those zones. In a lot of the weaker parishes, as we see a whistle on the play. Same Cohen is down. Has put on a bit of body as well, Cohen. It's obviously he's doing his strength work, his gym training. He certainly doesn't look a lot taller, but certainly looks bigger in body. Ball into the area. And this time, Frankson will handle well enough. Virginia Frankson. They have opted for Frankson and Andrews to peer each other today. So far, successful. Best chance ball into Howe, which probably with a little more confidence in his finish. And it would have been 1 0 as the Veer captain is brought down. Javier Brown, who has been known to score the odd free kick or so. That one would have been too far even for him. did say earlier this season that when himself and Neil play that Fair United look a lot stronger a unit and that's going to run out of play hesitant was Ma Ma McLean and gave up the opportunity yeah he's he's now getting an earful from his team when the pass was played through I think if he had continued his run he would have got there hesitated it McLean and yeah he was never going to catch up with it after that Looking to improve the midfield plays, Malines. Well, they get it in the end. Wilson over the top. He will find. Is that Hardy on the right hand side? It is. Forced to turn back. Now Gordon, who likes to drive forward. Gordon, that was an interesting ball into the area, but Wright doesn't like the quality. And nevertheless, Malines will have yet another corner. Jermaine Thomas looking on. I think he'll be pretty happy with how they've looked attacking wise so far, my lines. Even though they haven't really created, you'd say, an out and out chance. Maybe a half chance, which fell to Hardy, but apart from that, there hasn't been anything. They yeah, haven't tested Othniel Reed in the very United goal. Who is new? Exactly. Another corner for Malines. This time, Daniel Hardy, so he's going to take punch at it as well or kick at it Daniel Hardy and his delivery is short as well the line still with the position Gordon into the area looking for right that was a pretty good ball but the fair defense outnumbering the Malines attackers and then committing the foul Damien Thomas, the player down. Livingston, the culprit. Or was it Reed? Actually, Steve or Reed. Yeah, elbowing to the back. That was never going to fly with Carville Banton. Just about three minutes left in the first half. And we're still looking for that goal in this fixture. Nil all the first time these two teams met on the 23rd of October. Yep. Almost halfway through on the 15th of January and it's still nil all. A couple of years ago you would say this is a real fair united kind of scoreline. That was actually a pretty good ball into the box, you know, in and around the penalty spot area. But again, Veer United guilty of not committing enough players 
as Cohen is down on this occasion. of a head injury. Cohen looks fine though, has a smile, but Carvel Banton just wants to make certain this was the well, it was actually a kick from Enrique Gon that ended up in the face of Cohen. Harrison allowed to come out of his area, utilizes the breeze well, looking for Livingston, can't quite find him. Livingston has switched flanks and come over to the left hand side. Broken up by Clark. Not sure he was looking for wide, but again, there's a turnover. Too much from both these teams in the middle of the park. Yes, they transition pretty well through the flanks, but in the middle, they have been careless. Approximately two minutes of added time to come. As we near the end of the first half, here is Livingston. Can Malines find a goal before the half? Livingston, nice ball into the area. But again, he can't find Jason Wright, who was lurking. Brown. Can't see it was the safest pass that found him. But anyhow, here now in the wide area, which is where Malines have been vulnerable all season. That pass was intended for. <laughs> First, might ask if he was colorblind because there were only blue shirts around the direction that pass was played. Yeah, that was a tired attempt at the cross, I think. Mm. Could see that from a mile away. But, but even where he was facing for the cross, there was nobody in green clo even close. I think that was a bit of a program move. <laughs> oh, I'm in a wide area. Let me try and get across it. Again, that quick release from Harrison looking to catch Vier United out. They're still going for that long pass. As you said, Vier United using a high line. We haven't really seen the pass over the top work apart from the Livingston effort early in the game. It's been more... It's been more utilizing the width of Malines. In fact, both teams have been utilizing the width pretty well in terms of transition. They use the wide areas. It's when the passes have had to come through the middle that they just haven't been able to get it right. No pun intended as they're looking for right again. Gordon. Gives it away to Brown. Brown looking for help. Now to Cohen. Has space. Has Franks out of position as well. Cohen on the right foot. Cohen unwilling to shoot. Goes on to the left. Uh, well, can't say it was the best decision making from the teenager. Cohen. It's out for a goal kick. And when he went on to the right, with that kind of space, you thought he would test Harrison's goal, but decided to go on to the left and then was closed down. He yeah, did really well to create separation for himself twice, first on to the right and then even on the left. I expected him to get a shot off, but yeah, as you mentioned, not the best decision making. And I think that has shored up we'll, the fact that we'll go into the first half break Nilal and we have. Yep, Carvel Banton bows his whistle, he's seen enough. And quite frankly, most have seen enough of this first half. It's a nil all between Fair United and Malines. It's been much of what we saw a few months ago in October. No real opportunities for Jason Wright, the captain. The most talented of the strikers on show, you would have to say, Jason Wright, but 
He's been starved of balls in telling areas for my lines and fear. Well, they just haven't really got their 18 yard game going on. Pickford has been much of a passenger as well in this first half. We go to a break here at the Stadium East Field with a nil all scoreline be between 8th place Vare United and 12th place Malines. The home of champions, always keeping you ready with lots of action. The JPL on Sportsmax 2, later tonight. Tumba holding against Arne Gahn here at 7.30 p.m., 8.30 ECT. That would be a big match, fifth versus sixth. And then, cricket, lovely cricket. West Indies Tour of Australia on Sportsmax. Live on Tuesday, that's tomorrow, at 7.30 p.m., 8.30 ECT. The Windies, what can they do? against the Australians in test cricket. We're getting ready for the second half in this one. Vare United against Malines United. We're still looking for a goal this season. It was nil all on the 23rd of October 2023. And it's still nil all with 45 minutes to go. Chris Taylor alongside Lige Williams. And Lige from both sides of the spectrum, you have to say both teams need to improve their quality in the second half, especially, especially in the middle of the park. Yeah, I think the middle of the park was bypassed a bit too much for my liking for from a Malines perspective and from a very United perspective. I think there was a little a bit of inaccuracy in the passing that we're not accustomed to at times this season. I think they need to get the ball flowing more through their captain. I personally think Javier Brown, uh, I think Nathaniel Howe was impressive for very United. I think he could be a bit better as well. And I, and I definitely think Daly in the middle could be a bit more accurate also. The second half has started, and well, some lovely skill initially to flick that overhead. That was from Beckford. Well, and there we go again. <laughs> Two bits of skill there by Vere United, but then they turn it over. Salmon gives it up to Livingston. Livingston on the left-hand side. Tries to put it into the air, and again, they can't find Jason Wright, who is a lone soldier, it would must say, in the 18-yard box. Here goes Livingston again. This time, better delivery, and Wright should have scored. Wow. Beat the defender at the near post. Jason Wright had a good look at it. You probably say his vision might have been a little bit blurry because the tall defender in front of him. What a chance for Malines early. Did make connection right, but yeah, didn't have enough pace to get past Reed. Hmm. I said that Reed wasn't tested too much in the first half. Early in the second, he has had to pull off a save. And very nice, it looked to create some trouble of their own. I said you wanted to see Brown, and it is Brown here trying to find that pass. Can't. And then, just like we saw early in the first half, Jason Wright called for offside. Yeah, but when I want to see Roger Brown on it, it's more from a, a, a Javier Brown, I beg your pardon. Here's a chance again for Jason Wright. Right technique, I think, but just didn't get the power. Did okay. well to head it down, tried to find the corner, but... Yeah, not the I don't think it came off the forehead. I, yeah. I think in the end it might have come off his nose or even his ears in the end. But it's also obviously when from, from it came off of his structure, it was a soft landing into the turf, the ball that is. So yeah, just maybe the timing. I think at right idea, but his timing probably a little off. We have a free kick here for Vare United. A couple of talented ball strikers. You mentioned Javier Brown, the captain earlier in the game Kemar Bushi Beckford also known for his ball striking and so too Nathaniel Howe who scored a couple of scorchers in the Dacosta Cup last season and this season from a dead ball but I assume that Kemar Beckford and Javier Brown have drawn rank 
those are the two over the ball. Yeah, not the easiest of angles either because it's it's a little bit left, isn't it? So it will require quite a bit. Let's see if they're going for goal. It will be Beckford. And yeah, you'd think even if that was on target, that Harrison would have had it covered. As I said, requiring a little bit too much with the angle. And most times from that kind of angle, the players up to find a delivery towards the back post to bring a teammate into play. Anyhow, Beckford with a kick over the top. And hasn't really had any opportunities to shoot so far, so I guess he wanted to warm up the boots. Easily the most potent of goal scorers if you're looking at a career, Bushy Beckford, because he scored in, and of course I mean on the field of play, 60 he scored in his Premier League career. Nice pass, good first touch from Hardy, and what a finish that is. Got, scored a double against Mobe United in Malign's only win of the season. When he scores, they win. And Daniel Hardy with a peach of a first touch and a brilliant finish into the far corner. And Reed had no chance, one nil Malign's. It was a peach of a pass, as you said, Chris. And the finish was destined for a goal. And that's the type of football we want to watch in this league. That's the league we want to watch. Excellent finish. You mentioned the fact that when he scores, they win. He scores pivotal goals. And it must be said, what a goal that was. And Hardy has given Malines United a rare lead this season. And Vera United have to find their strengths of reserve to get over this one. 49th minute strike for Hardy, who finds his third of the season. And Malines, this time, the pass was accurate, going to the front men. And as we said from the start, I just think that Hardy is the right kind of partner for Jason right up front. He has that element about him, Daniel Hardy. Just his third goal, but I think the understanding with himself and Wright, even though Wright didn't play a part there, it's good. I, I think Livingston is better served as a, as a wide player than a central player for Malines. But anyhow, a big lead. As, and as I said, Malines haven't enjoyed leads really in this league this season. And that would be an important one because they are just one point above relegation. Cohen is down again. Did take one to the face earlier, Dunstan Cohen. And he's in some discomfort yet again. The fans, well, they're getting a bit more lively. You can see a double holding supporter there as well. Her team will come into action after this one against Arnett Gaz. Ooh, the studs from Enrique Gordon coming down the side of Cohen, and that was a bit naughty from Gordon. It looks worse on the slow motion. Hands of apology. Fear supporters in the crowd as well. Wilson looking to get forward, broken up by Howe. And he gives it away. Of course, Nathaniel Howe's head coach at Central is the assistant coach here at Vier United in Germany in Douglas as Malines drive forward Livingston he's so good from the wide areas Livingston with his pace and skill but needed a better delivery on that occasion should have found a blue shirt he had three in the box to aim for and instead he picked green I think this game state might might play into the hands of Malines. They've been looking to transition well so far in this game. I think now that Fair have to go for this equalizer. Malines could be well served. Here is Wilson. It was his delivery that found Hardy for the goal. 
broken up by Gordon and that's going to find its way through to Reed. So Reed is beaten for the first time. And yeah, lots of work for Linville Dixon to, to do. They're now in the negative in terms of goal difference as well. Fair United, they have conceded 18. And scored only 17, minus one. And they currently sit eighth in the table. Marked improvement to last season. You'll be disappointed that they've conceded. No, they're looking to drive over that first touch. That's too heavy from how though. Way too heavy. And the understanding between him and Beckford not quite there. Again, it's scrappy in the middle of the park. Normal lines have it looking to create something. Broken up. The drum rolls have started in the stands. Finally, they have gotten a goal in this fixture. It took, what, 139 minutes to get the first one. Is there more in it? Can always appreciate the quick math with you, Chris Taylor. Ball over the top. Oh, well, he's certainly offside. I think both himself and Beckford were miles offside. I'm not sure if they thought they were playing a game of scrimmage way offside there and they turn it over yet again yeah 139 minutes no goals between these two of course Malines did the double over there last season 4-0 and 1-0 and it's been almost two years since Veer United have managed to score against Malines the wait continues yeah goal would be like gold for them in this encounter now have to work hard to do it. Javier Brown looking to progress here. United turning up the pressure, but Beer United still struggling to play through it. They are the drummers. I mean, they don't look all that happy, not a lot of smiles, but maybe it's the concentration. Concentration is what my lines will need to see this out. Clean sheets, a rarity for them. This would actually be their third of the season. Two nil all draws. One against this very United team and another against Lime Hall. So is it time for them to turn a clean sheet of theirs into a win? Still over 30 minutes to go and very United. I'm sure won't let them go quietly. Here's Jason Wright linking up well with Wilson. Wilson across to Livingston! Wow! Rashawn Livingston from the left hand side. And he found the top of the right hand side of the goal. What a finish. Rashawn Livingston for his first of the season. We asked for improved quality from Alliance number 11, and now we've gotten it. So much ability. Dear tall, lanky number 11. And that was a supreme strike with the left boot into the far corner. No chance for Reed. The pass yet again was from Wilson, and look at that for a finish. That's a top finish from Rashawn Livingston. Scored three times last season, and he's finally off the mark here. Wow, 2-0 Malines, and they're in full control. 
Now, that was reminiscent of the liquid football that we saw at times from Malines United last season. What a finish that was. Malines United, they must be in dreamland right now because this is not a position they're used to. But it seems as if they, if they need a win, if they need a result, Vera United is the team to play. Malines United, in the blink of an eye, really, are now 2 0 up in this contest. What a start to the second half for Malines, looking for their second win of the season. Just one win in 13 matches, a 2 1 win against Mobe United. They have had five draws and seven defeats. Malines sitting just one point above Treasure Beach and the relegation zone. I mean, three points today won't move their position in the table, but it will carry them further away from Treasure Beach and Lime Hall. Three points will take them to 11th, which is still three points away from Humble Lion, who sits in 11th, their nearest rival in terms of table position as there's another whistle on the play and it will be a yellow card to the captain Javier Brown second yellow card of the contest and he joins Damian Thomas in the book didn't look like much was in it initially. It seems like actually both players were guilty of a bit of stamping. Brown ends up in the in the book though because I actually thought there was contact on Brown as well. Confirmation of the yellow card for Javier Brown who feels a bit hard done by. So Malines with a two-goal advantage. And looking for more. Hardy. After 49. Livingston after 57. Can Veer United respond? The last... I actually think consistency has been a, a bit of an issue for Vare United this season. Only back-to-back -back wins on one occasion. So for a team that's looking to push on into the top six, although they have had much improved performances, I still think they need to find that consistency. And this performance, I think, is even more indicative of that. Well, what they might be looking at here, Leger, is back-to-back -back losses. That's not the kind of stat you want from an administrative perspective here. Offside again against Beckford. But yeah, 2-1 they lost against Double Holding, having led in that match. And well, trailing here by two goals. And we really haven't seen any signs so far that they're going to add something. Anyhow, what they have added is players to their squad. So I wouldn't be surprised if Dean Andre Thomas, who is fresh from Double Holding, will be called upon at some point he's now he's come to them in the transfer window and they do need goals and we do remember in the early stages of double holding as a club Dean Andre Thomas was that go to player really the savior for them scored critical goals for them since then has been much of a, a substitute for double holding coming off the bench to score goals as well especially when they had actually moved on to the likes of Atafurai Bygrave as as well in that one, the season where Dumble Holding went all the way to the final. And he is getting ready now, Dean Andre Thomas. One of a couple substitutions 
that Vera United are preparing to make. It seems as if there's going to be three substitutions for Bay United looking to arrest this situation. Malines United still penning them in a bit. Kimar Beckford looking to make a nuisance of himself but hasn't really been able to make a significant impact on proceeding so far and concedes a foul on that occasion. And here come first of the changes it is going to be Dean Andre Thomas yeah no surprise there based on his ability up front Thomas wearing the number 25 for this fair team has played for quite a few years for Tumble Holding Cohen coming off as well no surprise at Daly taken off he's had a miserable time in the middle of the park daily good big structure about him but a bit wasteful in terms of his passing Cohen has been in and out of the the knocks and the injuries and yeah so three changes what difference can they make Sujay Graham their number 23 is on as well scored twice so far this season and they need goals here he is on the ball Graham and of course for Kibi Farkasen talented player who came out of the high del crew for Kibi Farkasen has scored one goal already this season there's a confirmation of the change Graham for Daly Flemings just can't get the touch right and it's out for a throw. Warming up some players of their own, Malines. They'll be in a much happier state of mind with a two goal lead. Livingston chasing this one on the left hand side. Does look much more comfortable when he plays in the wide areas, Rashawn Livingston. Just wonder if this goal is, is what will kickstart his season, really. In fact, was was a was a main was a main part of their starting lineup last season and then got injured and struggled to find to get back a, a regular place. This was after he started the season very well. Three goals in quick succession. This season, he's not been at his, his best. He's come off of the bench at times and so on, but maybe he just needed that kind of moment with a goal. Wilson from the area, good ball. Looking for right and just couldn't get to it in the end. He was the only player in the 18-yard box, Jason Wright, which sometimes has been a problem for Malines. Probably just didn't gamble enough, I think, on that occasion, Jason Wright. And I guess sometimes when you are the only player in the box, it, you, you, you're not. Sometimes you you will unsure where to gamble because the deliveries haven't been consistent. So you kind of wonder where to go. And when you do have a teammate, then you can say, "Well, look, you know, I will stand off a little bit. I will go. To the other the other forward may go towards the back post, depending on the trajectory, so you get options." But with him having to cover the whole 18-yard box by himself, you're never sure where exactly to go. And they said that one was maybe a, a couple of yards away.
foul. And well, card out early. And that looks like Graham who is going to pick up the card there. Just after coming on, Sujay Graham. Definitely late with the challenge. And he goes into the book. Not necessarily how you would want his name recorded. Suje Graham. Yeah, that's not the change he would have wanted to make to the proceedings. Very nice looking to squeeze a bit. Here he is again, Graham. Unable to control and it's my lines moving through the gears now. Chance again for right, looking to cut in onto the left foot, comes back to Hardy, back to right. Wide chance, blocked. Oh, well. Jason Wright judging the spin correctly because there was a lot of spin on that ball, so was waiting for it to bounce. But just couldn't catch Reed off enough, didn't get enough power behind the header. And that was another real chance for Malines. Yeah, a bit you of nonchalance know. in the defending there by Vir United. Malines United attacking again. Again, just a bit behind. Jason Wright had company in the box on that occasion, but behind both him and his partner, here's a chance again. Yes, good chest control initially by Wright. I thought he was going to hit it on the volley on the right-hand side. Even though the defenders were coming, I think he could have gotten away with that. Decided to calm it down. There was still a, a bit of a chop. And then, yes, the, the, the spin there not easy to judge that and it had really slowed it down couldn't get the pace well download the spokes map sports max app today from your google play store or the apple app store and watch amazing sporting content on the home of champions test cricket coming up on tuesday australia versus the west indies what can the west indies do down under of course premier league football premier league football in Trinidad as well Champions League football and so much other content to find so easy as well to download and quite user friendly friendly is how you describe this VR defense in the second half now they're looking to make some attack at an attack of their own and Paul just can't get it right. The lines with a chance to clear. High knees from Livingston. And well, Reed lucky to get away with that. Like lost a clearance from Reed between the sticks. Osneil Reed. And it came off the body of Livingston. And Livingston didn't know where it was, and luckily for Reed. It was so because that would have been number three. Here is Beckford inside to Thomas. Thomas scored twice last season for Dumble Holding. Dean Andre Thomas off the bench. Scored twice the season before. 26 goals in his Premier League career, does Dean Andre Thomas. Many of them vital. Here we need more than one today if they're going to salvage something from this game. Long throw into the area. Not the best clearance comes to Beckford. Now set up on the edge of the box for Brown, who hits it into the wall. Good defending in the end, and then that is over the top. Just the kind of area that Javier Brown likes to punch them from. To score quite a few goals from the edge of the 18-yard area and thereabouts. Good connect. That was going well wide. <laughs> First when he struck it, I thought it was heading towards the goal but that was going way wide and Taraj Andrews ended up being the wall he might have been better served allowing it would not want to pass but alas you you wouldn't have known that in the moment he's going to get some attention now into the 73rd minute I'm aligns with the two goal advantage goals coming from Hardy in the 49th and Livingston in the 57th. And a 
changes about to be made. Those are the goals. These are the goals. Hardy with the strike, the first of them. What a pass. What a touch from Hardy. And then the finish into the far post was excellent. Couldn't have done it any better, Daniel Hardy. His third of the season. And my line's first. Then Wilson picking up yet another assist. The pass, simple. The strike, magnificent from Livingston. Very difficult technique. Complicated kind of finish because you almost have to hit that with the outside of the left foot because of how the ball is coming to you. And he couldn't have hit it any better into the top corner. And he yeah, plays a ball to restart. My lines for the time being are down to 10 or are they know they're making the change. Steve O'Reed is off. And on comes Sujay McBee. They're number 12. So force change, Reed off, but being on. As my lines look to drive forward again. This time, they're looking for Livingston. Can't bring it down. Bantam says handball. There's a stoppage and a delay play. I think Livingston was probably just tired. Yeah, probably just winded on that occasion has been put through a lot of running. Livingston. Very nice to look to launch another attack. Solid performance so far from online. He's not giving up many opportunities apart from maybe the one chance for Hull that came in the first half. Can't really remember anything otherwise. They have now put their goal tally on the season in double figures. They now have 11 Malines as Beckford looks to make a difference but can't. Play is broken up. Long pass again from Gordon, but it's just going to hang in the breeze. Livingston battling again. He has renewed energy since his goal, Rashawn Livingston. I think both teams have employed a similar tactic of a high line and then trying to play the ball over the opposing team's high line. But I think it's very fair to say that Malines United have executed much better than Vare United. Here they come again. Yeah. Play broken up. Slowly giving away the ball. No, there's a throw. Slowly. It's actually that Wilson who is down. Tyreek Wilson down. The sports match up moment, and it's the goal from Rashawn Livingston. The pass from Tyreek Wilson, and then that finish, a thumping finish. His first goal of the season, and what a goal to score. The outside of the left boot into the far corner, magnificent finish from Rashawn Livingston. Kept his eye on the ball even after he kicked it. And that was the second goal for the Lions on the day, and his first of the season in the 57th minute. Yeah. That quality deserves to be the Spurs Max at moment. Fear give it away again. Then here goes Livingston.
Here in the middle of the park, it's with Parkinson. Plays it back to Brown. Here looking to build something now. They desperately need a goal. Long pass, yes, again from Clark. Not a bad one. Finds the head of Thomas. Who was posting up against Taraj Andrews. And he's out for a goal kick. Head off target. Takes it down well. That certainly was not anywhere close to Jason Wright, and they give it over Beckford, who has dropped a bit deeper now. As Beckford find it out wide. First touch is the best from Salmon, and the United will have a throw. I yeah, said so Johnny Flemings would have had to have an impact going forward. If my lines were to do well, but he certainly put in a shift defensively. There he is again, Johnny Flemings. In a role that is not his custom at left back. Generally plays in the middle of the park, Johnny Flemings. But as I said, he's one of those players that's very versatile. And always willing to try something new. It's been a few weeks now he's been asked about. Two or three matches now he's been asked to play left back. Today he's done pretty well, as you said. Hasn't really gone forward much, but has sat well. And broken up most of the threats that would have come in the, on the flank areas for Vera United. Strong challenge coming in from Howe. Banton believes that it's a, it's a fair challenge. It's Hardy who is down score of the first goal Carvel Banton is telling the physio to wait as Hardy makes his way back onto his feet Slowly to take the throw. Looking for Beckford. Beckford cuts in well. Then wanted to do something fancy. And Frankson wins a goal kick. This is just the third time this season that Malines have managed to score two goals they had a two-all draw against Harbour View on the 11th of December and then of course their 2-1 win over Mobile United in the, on the 27th haven't scored more than two goals though but yeah step in the right direction for them and they are now 11 goals overall to go with the 22 that they have conceded and as I said earlier, uh, clean sheet has been a rare occurrence for them. This would just be their third. Brown, dangerous. And encouraging signs for them as well. Especially under the tutelage of... That's a good take. Especially under the tutelage of Jermaine Thomas. They would move on to, I think, now 11 points. Now, eight of them would have come under Jermaine Thomas, so impressive the improvement that we've seen. Here's Brown looking to unleash. That one's wayward. I think too often in this game he has looked to be the hero in proceedings 
with his passing and now with his shooting. Peter Harrison seemingly headed for his third clean sheet of the season. Didn't seem the happiest of figures at the start of the game due to a little kid clash and a hold up of proceedings, but I think if he were to hold out, if his team were to hold out for a clean sheet, he would be ecstatic, really. Ball lumped forward. Thomas tries to deal with it. Right, trying to find a teammate, but very United escape. Ravde. Now they haven't they can see the throw in. Lines on the prowl again. Must be said that the centre back pairing for Malines United has been pretty impressive so far in this game as well. Sergini Franks and Taraj Andrews. So to this man on the ball. Javon Brown. That was. So a couple of impressive performances all around for the Malines United outfit. We'll make the man of the match discussion. Which we'll have in a few much more interesting. Here's how twisting, turning. But again, a wasted pass up front. And that's been disappointing from this fear midfield. And yeah, how as well, when he looks back at his game, the youngster. Nice run in that first half where he probably felt he should have scored. But even though he's looked energetic, keeping away the ball a little bit too much in terms of the quality of passing, as Peter Harrison tries to run the clock. Has something to say as well to Dean Andre Thomas. Just about four and a half minutes to go, plus stoppages. As Malines continue to enjoy possession and the two goal advantage Malines about to make a couple more changes Daniel Hardy one of the goal scorers is going to come off He's had a good game as well. Vigier there, number 32, apart from that goal, but has worked well with Jason Wright and Rashawn Livingston in that front three. And his shift is over. Richard Gooden coming on. And yeah, Tariq Wilson, a good return for him as well. Two assists for Wilson. And Joshua Duar. A, yeah. Joshua Duar, his replacement. Jason Wright is down, but I guess not out. Joshua Duar, another talented teenager, captain of the Haile Selassie Manning Cup team. Good frame and ironic good that Haile Selassie is actually coached by Linville Dixon. So he should know all about his quality. Yeah, Linval Dixon, of course, the head coach of Fear and not Maligne, so he would know all about Duar. I assume Duar just didn't want to make the trick to Clarendon for his club football. <laughs> Driving run forward now from McBean. From actually Gooden. And it's broken up. Oh, that was nice skill from Brown. And then he... Oh, I actually thought Brown stepped on the ball. Javier Brown, but no. And there's a card shown from Banton to Javon Brown. He doesn't like the call, does Brown, and picks up a yellow card for his troubles. I think the foul might have actually been on Brown. He tugged 
back his namesake, Javier. Not to say Javon Brown playing in that central midfield role today, and especially in the first half, did a pretty solid job breaking very, up play well. Very robust player. Of course, it is that time where we discuss the man of the match as well. DJ obviously it will be coming from a, a player in blue based on their performance and, and I mean there have been quite a, a few solid performances Livingston especially is finishing the game very well I think his second half a lot better than his first but he's been busy both sides of the park Hardy who has come off it almost looked like a handle ball but it cleared from by Taraj Andrews if this man Brown in the first half broke up a lot of the play of Fear United very well hadn't been called upon as much in the second half but again broke the play there and defending and of course Johnny Flemings would be in the reckoning for you in that left back role. Yeah, I also oh, yeah. spoke well about the centre back pairing of Malines United. Malines not usually a very robust team defensively, yeah. so I think they handled whatever was thrown at him. Not much, but whatever was thrown at them. I I'm, think I'm glad you put in that well. point. Not much. I don't think Frankson or Andrews were really tested as much. But yeah, I agree with you that. The synergy seemed a little bit better with Andrews coming in into the starting lineup. I thought Andrews had played pretty well, but I agree that Veer have not really put them to the test enough. And I think maybe more credit to the, the midfield of, and as I say, even Brown in that central midfield role. And even from the wide era, Fleming, Fleming's as well. But I think the first name you called would be my pick, Rashad Livingston. I think, especially in the second half, as you mentioned, did a really good job not only his goal not only his actions on the ball but i think his forward pressing his defensive work tireless running as well and i think the verticality that he added to this Molines united team in the second half i think that has been the trigger that has been the key to get them over the line to get them this win as we see eight minutes of stoppage time go up yeah, lots of time left in eight minutes. And yeah, Veer will be glad to see that. What a ball inside the area. Well, they got in each other's way, did Livingston and Gooden. Couldn't sort it out. That was one of the best deliveries we've seen into the era from a Malines perspective today, and they have had plenty. Of course, there was a change for... Malines, as you were making that point, Omario Cunningham has come on for Jason Wright, who went off with a bit of a niggle, and that will be a concern the cap for the captain and the Malines administration. That's another poor challenge from Howe. And Howe needs to be careful here. He's been in the wars a bit today, Nathaniel Howe. Certainly not shy of putting in a challenge has done on several occasions today lucky to escape without a card mm. i think on that occasion still six and a half minutes to go for my lines and yeah as far as you're concerned livingston in at the front of the pack in terms of the, the man of the watch and i certainly like to agree especially and as you said a, a lot of times it's important how you also finish and he's definitely finishing in a very strong way Rashawn Livingston that goal the quality of that goal in a, in a game that in the first half really lacked quality you know, that was a really top finish here's fear trying to get forward but they're not going to get there ahead of Gooden who gets back to put it into touch Double holding, warming up. Big match against Harborview, against Arnett Gardens coming up. Fifth versus sixth. Here United lofting that in, but Peter Harrison is going to take control. And looks to get Livingston on the goal. Livingston has a lot of a lot of pace, but he was offside. Well. Malines well, United bench. Seemed a bit surprised about that one. As their coach, Jermaine Thomas, asked for calm. Mm. Experienced assistant referee. Well, not the best clearance. Comes to Duar. Duar looking to utilize his skill there and then committing the foul. 
Must be said, I think defenders get a lot of leeway with those calls. Here come Vera United again. Very experienced first assistant, though, in Ajay Duhaney. FIFA assistant referee as well. And yeah, it was a bit of a surprise at first because it seemed like Livingston was holding back. But I guess not enough. Throw to Veer. Just over four minutes to go in this one. Malines lead by two goals to nil. Daniel Hardy in the 49th minute and Roshan Livingston in the 57th. Two assists for Tyreek Wilson. We didn't even really talk much about him, but two critical passes from him. The first one, a really talented pass, very accurate in terms of its delivery and weight second one more of a, a regulation lateral pass uh, Livingston made the most of it but he can't take away from even those passes because even the weight and timing of it was perfect for Livingston to hit it one immediately time. exactly yeah Wilson has since come off their number seven but I think returning to the starting lineup as well it's been an impressive performance from him and he also should really have been in, in the reckoning Wilson solid game in the middle of the park was in the wars as well took a couple knocks but a, a solid shift actually thinking about it now it's probably uh, between himself and and, and, and and Livingston to me with honorary mentions for for Hardy and Flemings and Brown as well mm. Another bit of skill from how who flicks it over the head of the Malines player and gets the crowd all energized. However, it might all be in vain in the next three minutes or so. They give it away again, and here goes Gooden. Gooden into the area using his pace. Gooden! Well, that was a late challenge which goes unnoticed. Gooden doesn't make a big deal of it. There, send it forward. And again, there's a flag. Nicholas Anderson on this occasion, both assistant referees on the FIFA panel of officials. So the week continues for Fair United. Haven't scored against Malines since April 10th, 2022. Malines did the double over them last season. 4-0 and 1-0 the wins. The first match this season was nil all. And now this. Continuing their dominance, Malines. Over a fair team that two weeks running have managed to score. It's, they haven't failed to score since the 27th of December. In fact, when you look at fair's games before this, only once they had failed to score in their last six matches. This a, a big dent to their confidence. Still a little bit of time to, to change that fact. Here's Thomas. They are doing some good work in the transfer window, bringing in himself and Damian Thomas. But wow, well, the result of a positive nature just hasn't followed them. This is going to be their second loss in a row. And for Malines, their second win in four matches. Yet another offside. Just a few seconds left in this one. 
And the Lions are going to find themselves with their second win of the season in 14 matches. It will carry them four points away from the drop zone. And there it is. The whistle goes from Carvel Banton. It's been a solid performance by Malines. They execute their third clean sheet of the season and their second win. Goals from Daniel Hardy in the 49th minute and that man Rashawn Livingston in the 57th were, was enough to take them past the traveling team from Clarendon. Very united. They will remain in eighth position at least for now. Malines, well, they will, re they will remain in 12th, but they move further away from the relegation zone. 2-0 at full time over Fair United. Daniel Hardy and Rashawn Livingston, the man of the match. Full match highlights, Carvel Banton in charge of this one. Malines driving forward early in their full blue kit with yellow trim right to Wilson and Wilson dragging his shot wide in the end Malines looked more positive especially in the first half didn't really have many opportunities but a lot of action in and around the 18-yard area that was Daniel Hardy's attempt found a little bit of space but was high and wide then this run from Howe the teenager think he should have scored going for the far post probably the right idea but give credit to Peter Harrison who did very well then Jason Wright second half heading into the ground should have done better and this from Beckford Beckford was more of a spectator pushy Beckford in the in this match 60 goal man in his Premier League career but really had nothing going and that one was over the top then this the first goal to break the deadlock after 49 minutes great pass from Wilson Hardy's first touch was magnificent the way he took it down and his finish clinical with the right boot into the far corner Reed had no chance and my lines were off and running. Then Jason Wright using his strength well to get into the area. It came again to Wilson who waited his pass superbly into the path of Rashawn Livingston who would score his first goal of this season. Malines second after 57 minutes. Their tall number 11 with the sports max at moment of the afternoon. 2 nil Malines and three points in the bag. They had five shots on target from their eight attempts compared to just one on target from six. 24 fouls between the two teams. It was a pretty bit of a busy afternoon in the end for Carvel Banton. He showed four yellow cards as well. Three of them to the green and yellow of Vare. Their goalkeeper... Made majority of the saves of Neil Reed. He made three of them, but couldn't keep out the two goals scored by Malines, who had the majority of the possession as well, and all the points in this Monday afternoon fixture. Malines United 2, Fair United nil, And they stretch their points further up the table with 11 points now still in 12th position. And let's hear from our man of the match, Rashawn Livingston, who is with Ligier Williams. Rashawn Livingston, today's man of the match. It was a beautiful goal from you today. Walk us through that first. Uh, the goal, the goal, well, was been working hard in training, you know. Uh, work, working, working in the final third, never getting it right, you know. Uh, tonight, we came, came out strong and get the job done. And caps off, uh, caps off the lads, you know. And it's the first goal of the season. I, I think that Malines, you know, they need you to really come and score some goals, get some assists. Did you feel like there was a burden off your back to get that goal? Well, yeah, yeah. You know, we get one, so we have many more, many, many more to come. Yeah, I only can go forward from here. And it's been a tough start to the season so far, but you're gaining some momentum now. What is the mood like in the camp, especially after this win? Uh, the, the mood in the camp, well, you know, it, 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 it now go perfect, but every, everything getting together well right now. As, as I can see, we're playing better, enjoying, enjoying the game. Yeah, so it's kind of more free. Now. All right, great win, great goal, and best of luck for the rest of the season. All right, thanks. Man. thanks man. So now we're moving on to 
coaching staff of Vare United. It's going to be their head coach, Linval Dixon. Coach, we spoke before the game, it was a big opportunity for your team to get into the top six, but they just couldn't get the opportunities. Yeah, could, and definitely so we couldn't get the opportunity. I think we get we, we were in the game for, for the most part, especially in the first half, you know, and we could have capitalized on a, a chance that we get. We should have scored, you know, but so the nature of the game, you know, we come back out and we, we, we never look, we never look really, really like we are into it, you know, and, and then the indiscipline start to creep in and, you know, and we get two goals, you know, but we still have to get back and learn and, 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 and really, really meet with the players them, you know, have a meeting because, you know, I think a meeting would, would have players express themselves how they feel and what's the problem and what's the situation because until we get that right you know then this team you know will will never push to to what we want and where we want to go you know so so it it it, it it's a work that we, that we have to do and you know you, I, i'm sure you harbor aspirations of getting into the top six what are your feelings like going into the rest of the season do you still think that this team has the quality that it takes to get into the playoff places. Well, we show that you know we show that over over last over the over last year you know that you know we can we can fight with the big guys them and and, and, and beat them, you know. But today wasn't was it a day that you know we really come here to play? You know, the, everything just never never went well for us, you know. And we just look at it and 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 work for the next one to come. All right, thanks very much, coach. All the best for the rest of the season. Thank you, my brother. Yeah. Going now to coach Jermaine Thomas of Malines United. Coach, it's been a really good start under your tutelage for Malines United. Eight points now of the 11 that Malines have had overall in the season. What has changed in the unit? I mean, it has been teamwork. You know, we have a very good coaching staff. I have very good support uh, around me. So it makes my job a little bit easier. We have been working really, really hard in training. And um, we've been really, really demanding a lot from the players. And they have been responding well. And even today, you know, it was a really tight game, especially in the first half. The second half, though, decided by two really important moments. The final third I play, especially in the second half, was really bright by your team today. Yeah, we, 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 after the first half, we, we were kind of, I mean, turning over a little bit too fast, a little bit too easy. Uh, we spoke at halftime and um, we wanted to, to really open the pitch a little bit wider. And... and um, we had some switches, some good switches, and we got good, two good goals, you know, from two good um, switching of the point, points of attack. All right, congrats again on the win, coach, and all the best for the rest of the season again. Yeah, man, thanks much. All right. Positive results there for Jermaine Thomas, who executes his second win in four matches. This Malines team now with six big points as they sit in 12th position, but further away from the relegation zone with 11 points. Yep, more work for that man to do, Linval Dixon, who will remain in eighth. But as he said, you'll have to call a meeting to discuss how they move forward from here via United. It's been a dominant display for the Lions, especially in the second half. They move away with all three points here at the National Stadium East Field. Well, that's it. Malines 2, Fair United 0, Ray and Nephew, Jamaica Premier League action.